for all men, in prayer for all men, we declare that this is the day of salvation and grace. And then we break the hold of Satan from men's lives. Listen again, what I'm trying to tell you. I'm showing you from what we just read. So we pray for all men. We have, we have an argument in the prayer. We're not just announcing. You see, supplication is definite requests. All right? So he told us to pray like this for all men. So we have to make definite requests. And we have to present our argument. I explained all those things. Don't forget where we're coming from. All right? So in prayer for all men, we declare that this is the day of salvation and grace. And so we break the hold of Satan over their lives. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1. No, I'm, 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 I'm going to give you that scripture in another one. Just leave that one. Go straight to Acts chapter 26, verse 18. Acts chapter 26, verse 18. Yeah. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. So in prayer for this number one, and I'm praying and I say, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I am praying for all men, for the nations of men. Maybe I'm praying for a city. Maybe I'm praying for a country. And I say, I pray for the people of my country, my nation, and I mention the name or I mention the city. In the name of the Lord Jesus, what am I praying about? Father, this is the day of salvation. This is the day of grace. Irrespective of their darkness and their sin, I'm praying that salvation may come to them in the name of Jesus. So I break the power of Satan over their minds. Why? Because the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, put that scripture there. So you write it as a reference to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. It says, in whom the God of this world, Satan, has blinded the minds of them which believe not. He's the one that blinded their minds. So in the name of the Lord Jesus, I break the power of Satan with which he has blinded them that they should not see the salvation of Christ. I break that influence in the name of Jesus. You see, I'm praying like that for them. And Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I decree and declare that they will be turned from the power of Satan unto God. From darkness to light in the name of Jesus. I break the influence of Satan over their minds, over their thoughts. So that's number one. Then number two, pray that the Lord of the harvest will send forth laborers into the harvest fields of leaders of nations and governments. You see, because we seem to be leaving that out. So there's a harvest field. The lords of people, the lords of leaders all over the world today, and different levels. But many of them don't have the chance to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. So now we're going to pray. And we pray that the Lord will send forth laborers into the harvest fields of leaders of nations. Look, my brothers and sisters, we are about to see a harvest of souls among leaders of nations all around the world. Because Jesus told us to pray like this. Now, go into your Bibles in Luke's gospel chapter 10. Let's read from verse 1 to verse 3. You'll see this now. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come. Look at that. 70 disciples. Not just the 12. 70. And he sent them two and two into every city and place whither he himself would come. In other words, he was planning on going there too. And now he has not only 12 disciples, he's got 70 now. And he sends them to all of these places. Wow. Wow. Look at the next thing. Therefore said he unto them, the harvest truly is great. Oh, Labakasi Yaramante. He was seeing potential believers. Jesus was seeing potential believers. In his mind, he was seeing potential believers. 
He said that harvest truly is great. There are so many souls we can win. The harvest truly is great. He says, but the laborers are few. I, he has 70 now from 12 to 70. Go back, look at it. Go, go back to verse one. Because you can read about, he did this before in St. Matthew's gospel chapter nine. All right, he sent the 12. But now he sends 70 and they're still not enough. Still not enough. He says the harvest, the harvest says he appointed other 70 also. All Truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest. Who is the Lord of the harvest? The Holy Ghost. Pray the Lord. Next one. Oh, then it says, Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. So he knew, he understood very well. Somebody says, Do you know who are those I'm dealing with? God knows. He knows that you are a lamb in the midst of wolves. Yes, sir. But he said, I am with you always. I am with you. He sent us as lambs in the midst of wolves. Naturally, wolves who want to pounce on lambs. But we are lambs of a different kind. Yes, hey, hey, hey. The wolves soon find out we are not edible. Yeah. <laughs> they find out real quick. We are not edible lambs. We are lambs filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, hey, hey, glory to God. I, uh, mm. So you pray, oh Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray that the Spirit of God will inspire more of your children. In among the leaders, cause those who are your children in places of business, in places of authority, to become bold to preach the gospel. Send for laborers into your harvest field, O Lord. Because there are places you may not be able to get to, that I am not sent to. But there are Christians in those places. Yes, sir. There are those whom God will give opportunities to get there. Yes, he knows what to do. Yes, there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few, by old or by young. Yes, we can trust him. But ours is to pray. Yes, he said, pray that the Lord of the harvest yes, will send forth laborers. Yes, have you prayed for your president like that? Have you prayed for your governor like that? Have you prayed for your mayor like that? It's about time. It's time to pray like that. It's time to pray that the Holy Ghost will send forth laborers among the judges, laborers among the legislators, legislators, laborers among the parliamentarians, laborers. And much will happen. So much will take place. This is why I'm sharing this with you. We are about to move into another phase of the harvest. Woo, glory to God. Mm. Number three. We pray to the Lord to change the minds of leaders of nations from foolishness and deception to wisdom and truth. Yes. He told us to pray for their leaders. How are we going to pray for them? That God will change their minds from foolishness and deception to wisdom and truth. Remember, Proverbs chapter 21, verse 1. We read it the other day. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 1. It tells us, The heart, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever, whithersoever he will. God can turn the mind of a leader. Remember when Esther prayed, even though the king Ahasuerus was not willing to see anybody, and Esther had been afraid to go in there, because if you went there without being invited, it was certain death. She said, 
fast for me. She told the Jews, fast for me, I will fast also. They prayed and fasted. She said, then I will go into the presence. If I perish, I perish. But she prayed and God changed the heart of Ahasuerus, the king. And Ahasuerus just turned and saw Esther and said, Queen Esther, what do you want? Even to the half of my kingdom. Oh, hallelujah. Jeremiah prayed. And because Jeremiah prayed, even though he was captured along with others by King Nebuchadnezzar, the Bible tells us this wicked king ordered Nebuchadnezzar to take care of Jeremiah. He said, and anything that prophet is asking for, give it to him. La Kabara City. He is able. He can change the mind of leaders. He is greater than all. Let us express our faith in our king, our God and our Christ. All things are possible with him. All things are possible with him. He announced it. That angel said it. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Nothing. Hallelujah. Nothing shall be impossible. Manto Karabase. We are moving into another level of the prayer ministry. And each one of us is taking our place. Nothing will be impossible unto us. Glory to God. Number four. Pray to overthrow the work of ungodly men who fill the earth with violence, poverty, and death, keeping men from experiencing the goodness of God in the earth. This is very important. I will, I'll say it again. Pray to overthrow the work of ungodly men who fill the earth with violence, poverty, and death, keeping men from experiencing the goodness of God in the earth. You see... The Bible tells us in Psalm 33, verse 5. Let's read it. Psalm 33, verse 5. He loveth righteousness. Our God loves righteousness and judgment, justice. The earth is full of the goodness and they will believe you. That the earth is full of the goodness of God. But this is the truth. But they don't see it. A lot of people are suffering. They, are, they have a hard life. Harshness of the environment. Many are broke. Many are hungry. Some are dying. Many are sick. All they have experienced in their life is a, a world of bitterness and pain. And yet, the Bible tells us the truth. That this earth is full of the goodness of God. Why are the people not seeing it? I'll tell you. Because of the works of wicked and evil men. That's why. They manipulate your country currency. They manipulate it. So they destroy the value of your currency. That's why you can't see real value in your, in your work. The more you work and achieve, the more they oppress your government to take down the value of your currency. So you are never able to have enough money, the financial power to acquire what you wish to have. So only them with the power of the currency will purchase what you could have had. So they keep you in want and penury. So poverty is not natural. Poverty is not, is not synonymous with being in the earth. Poverty is man-made. Understand it. If you understand the dynamics of the economies of this world, you will know poverty is man-made. It is made by the government systems of the world. And many, when they come into office, they are frustrated because they try a lot. But then they find there are forces beyond them. But these are forces of men. They are not gods. Yes, sir. But most people don't understand these dynamics. Oh, they think, oh, oh the central bank and this and all that. No. The reality is the manipulators. These are the ones causing poverty in the world. There's more than enough food in this world. There's more than enough wealth in this world. There's more than enough grace in this world. There's more than enough power and ability in this world. But the manipulators continue to keep men under. And that's why people experience violence. Violence is created. Do you understand? Look at what has just happened in Russia. I said it some, some months ago. I mentioned some months ago that trouble was coming to Russia. Why? Because the leaders don't totally agree with the deep states of the other side. 
And so, they send a threat to them. I say, you have to comply or we bring trouble to your country. And the first sign of trouble was when that guy who had gone to get himself treated in Germany returned. What audacity. After accusing the government, how could he come there boldly? It must mean that there were forces behind him. Yes, sir. Of course. Then he arrives and the paymasters help the same riots that they sent into America and sent to Nigeria sometime back, all right? The same paymasters have created the riots in that place. Why? To stir up trouble in Russia. What I'm saying is this. These are manipulations that create violence, trouble, poverty, and even death. Even death. Like what we have had around the world. This man-made pandemic that didn't qualify to be a pandemic. And that's why many call it a pandemic. And look what has happened. So these are the works of men. And we have to pray to overthrow these kind of works. So that men can actually experience what God has in the earth. Think about it. In some countries, like in New Zealand and in Australia and some other countries, where they have regulations against fishing. If you caught a fish, imagine, this is not from somebody's own pond. This is from natural waters. You will have to first register the fish that you caught. And to ascertain that this fish is allowed, that you are, it's allowed to be caught. Otherwise, if it's not allowed to be caught, you have to take it back and go and drop it back in the, in, in the water and let it go. So food is so regulated, you are not allowed to sow anything just because you want it. You have no permission to sow seeds in your farm and grow whatever you like. You can't do it. It has to be by permission. So you see the regulations, regulations have been used to bind men and bring them into poverty. Poverty is man-made. It's not natural. And so they don't see the goodness of God. But we just read it. The goodness of God is great in this earth. All over the earth says the earth is full of the goodness of God. So in praying like this, we pray to overthrow the work of ungodly men who fill the earth with violence, poverty, and death. And these things keep men from experiencing the goodness of God in the earth. So we pray. We pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus See, I speak words, I release words. And I say, I destroy the works of darkness that stop men from seeing your goodness in the earth. For the Bible declares that the earth is full of your goodness, but men have created poverty. And therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I put a stop to their works. I put a frustration in the past. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I cancel those evil regulations that destroy men's lives. This is how you pray. Your words have power. Don't let anybody convince you that what you're saying has no power. It's got force. It's got it. It's got it. The Bible says when the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. Just keep saying it. Don't stop talking it. Keep praying like that. Soon and very soon, your cloud will be full of water. And the condensation will take place. Amen. Let us just water the clouds with prayer. Prayer. I told you about offering prosuke. When you are offering prayers, sending prayers, praying, the, the, the spiritual cloud becomes thick with spiritual water. And nothing can stop it from a downpour. Manto kabarasiteki. Ligarabasataha. Just pray. Go ahead and pray right there where you are. Right now, pray right now. The Lord is with us. The Lord is with us, strong and mighty. Greater is He that is in us than He that is in the world. And we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. All things are possible to Him that believes. And we are the ones who believe. All things are possible to us. 
Manga rasete ribukasia, malenge grese braka la mande, lo brasa taka rabade. Go ahead and pray. Seko rabasa la mande. Open your mouth and pray to God. Oh, Rasiko Ramande. Liga Rasata Mande. Hasato Kuramante Kia. Giza Rabada Kase. The whole world is full of His goodness. And we cause this goodness to be known. In the name of the Lord Jesus. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Bara se tekele mandelia. Shepo rosi karabadi. Ko zabra tekaman. Yes. Go ahead and pray. Pray for your country. Pray for your city. Pray for your state. Pray for the leaders. Salvation is coming to them. The spirit of salvation is being poured out in these days. And they are being turned from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God. But they may receive remission of sins and inheritance among all them that are sanctified by faith that is in Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Sebra kundo robosia langa gase tiki brosinda la gras. O baraka sanda la mande. O santa base tiki. She rosa bredele regesto. Yes. With all prayer, 